when we found you and, and your podcast, it was like, okay, this is what we should have done the first time. It's like the properties make sense the day you buy them. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company. For more information and links to all our great podcasts, visit HartmanMedia.com. Welcome to the American Monetary Association's podcast, where we explore how monetary policy impacts the real lives of real people and the action steps necessary to preserve wealth and enhance one's lifestyle. It's my pleasure to welcome economist Thomas Young. He is a PhD economist with 15 years of real world experience. He works with the Utah legislature and he's an expert in econometrics and big data. Thomas, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. It's good to have you on the show. You've done some good research for us, and uh, I'm looking at uh, some of the graphs that you've created and so forth here. Very interesting stuff as we study the effect of interest rates on home sales. And of course, we, you know, as we've talked about, and all my listeners know, home sales cannot really be called one big uh, monolithic thing with, you know, 383 MSAs at Metropolitan Statistical Areas. It's such a tongue twister in the country, almost 400 markets. As you know, I divide them into kind of like three categories, linear, cyclical, and hybrid. But that said, we do need to look at the broad big picture because most of these studies don't segment this stuff down very well. And as we compare the 30-year mortgage rate to existing home sales, Thomas what does that tell us? You've got some interesting stuff here, starting in maybe 2012, especially. Yeah, so when I look at the relationship between the 30-year mortgage rate and uh, a broad measure of the number of existing home sales sold across the United States, the relationship is inverse, meaning that when mortgage rates go up, it puts downward pressure on uh, existing home sales. It looks like the lag between when mortgage rates rise and when home sales begin to drop is around three to six months. It can go up to nine months. I think the recent rise in the 30-year mortgage rate is just now starting to get priced into the existing home sales arena. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if mortgage rates stay where they are or if they continue to rise, if existing home sales maybe go from the current 5.34 million to perhaps as low as 5 million, which is historically, it's okay. It's not real strong. It's just okay. Now, what I've noticed, and I'd love for you to comment on this, Thomas, it's kind of counterintuitive. And I'm now into, uh, well, I don't want to say it in years, but I'll say it in weeks, 1,700 and 26 weeks in the business so far, I think. <laughs> uh, it's a long time. What I've noticed over the years is that when rates go up initially, that actually counterintuitively has the effect of making the market much busier and making people buy because there there's this fear of loss, this, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out, as they say, right? And so people yeah. jump in and buy, 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 but obviously that can't last. It's like a caffeine injection initially when rates go up people make decisions it causes them to get off the fence but then ultimately uh it has the effect of slowing things down so you say that the lag time is three to six months maybe even up to nine months is that correct yes can you dissect that a little, elaborate on that a little more i mean i mean it was nine months in when we're looking at your graph here it was nine months in this first spike in what 2012 right yeah, so back in 2013, when rates began to rise, the existing home sales market continued to rise for nine months until they peaked in September. And then and then they started to decline, and they declined for about five months until February 2014. And that's when the 30-year mortgage rate began to decline again. Then home sales picked up, right? And remember here, we're talking about all three types of markets, all all nearly 400 MSAs. So it's just the samples are just too darn broad because what we're seeing is that in the low-priced linear markets, the spike in rates, I mean, the market is just, it's booming. It, there's just no inventory. It's unbelievable how tight it is. But in places like where I grew up in Los Angeles, overpriced cyclical markets that have been really overpriced past the point of fundamentals for several years now, 
or any high-priced cyclical market, definitely we're seeing some softening. Orange County, where I live most of my life as an adult, in uh, Newport Beach area, very soft in those cyclical type markets. So in the future, when we have you on the show, I, I want to divide this up as best we can and really kind of parse it into cyclical, linear, and hybrid markets, if at all possible. But Thomas, take us up to now. The next big arrow on your graph is 2017, right? Yeah, mortgage rates started to rise in September 2017. And in November 2017, existing home sales peaked. So they've been kind of trending slightly downward since then. Interesting, interesting stuff. Okay, let's go to another uh, thing. And let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, inflation. As my listeners know, and as you know, too, I talk a lot about inflation-induced debt destruction and the actual benefits of inflation to investors, which are pretty significant. And inflation's been pretty mild for the last several years, at least according to the official stats. But how does it impact the overall economy and GDP and just general sentiment and growth? Yeah, inflation generally eats away at the value of assets. You know, the higher inflation is, usually that means lower GDP growth in the coming years. Right now, inflation's floating at about 2.7% year over year. That's the CPIU or the Consumer Price Index for all urban consumers. Uh, inflation is the hottest it's been in seven years, although in, in August it does look like run-up in inflation has peaked. We might see some uh, disinflation in the coming months. Okay, so you believe inflation has peaked. Now, what about, I mean, it, it would we could not have this discussion in a vacuum without discussing the trade war, as they call it, <laughs> right? So yeah. that has two interesting effects uh, that on the negative side and the one the media reports on most. It makes the price to American consumers of lots of things, everything at, you know, at every store and every, you know, car, it makes those prices increase because a lot of those materials are obviously imported, but it also makes the unemployment rate a lot lower and causes wage growth. Maybe you disagree with any of that, so feel free to pick that apart and unpack that a little bit. But um, what does the trade war mean for inflation in your eyes? Yeah, it certainly means higher prices for consumers. I was surprised that the dollar has been as strong as it has been, and that you know, with a stronger dollar, that puts downward pressure on inflation. I, I think that's one of the reasons that inflation has not picked up like some would expect it would. Mm -hmm. Right. The thing, though, when you talk about currencies is it's all relative, right? It's <laughs> every currency, it's fiat, and it's all a race to the bottom, right, ultimately. But, yeah. you know, Trump has talked a lot about China artificially suppressing the value of their currency to increase exports, right? So the opposite effect if theirs is weaker, the dollar is stronger, relatively speaking, right? So yep. talk to us about how that plays into the whole picture. I mean, I think Trump has a point that Chinese policymakers have artificially deflated their currency to boost exports. In relation to the dollar, the yuan certainly is lower than probably what it should be. The stronger dollar puts downward pressure on inflation relative to the trading partners. You know, it's making Chinese goods sold to the U.S. less expensive as well. I haven't seen yet a big drop in imports to the United States, so I, I don't think the tariffs are having a, you know, a material economic impact on the import sector or on the manufacturing sector yet. Well, it's still pretty early, right? And when we talked about our first issue today and we compared interest rates uh, to home sales, you know, there's a lag time, right? <laughs> we, we discussed that. So the question is, in the trade war, how long does it take to get the feedback? See, the problem is with all of these things, there's a lag time and, and the feedback doesn't come instantly. Any thoughts on how long that lag is and when we see that feedback? Oh, it wouldn't surprise me if it starts showing up in the October, November numbers. The small business optimism came in a little bit weaker this week. Yeah, uh, Europe's a little bit weaker. Across the globe, it looks like, mm -hmm. you know, economies are slowing down a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see it 
with the numbers in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. Well, Thomas, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. And uh, we will uh, look forward to doing some other studies with you and kind of dividing things up and unpacking them a little bit more than the mainstream media does, especially in terms of linear cyclical hybrid real estate markets. I think that's very important. And, you know, the old saying, folks, all real estate is local. So uh, let's keep that in mind. And uh, we'll look forward to talking with you in the future. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, heartmanmedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own, and if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.